Okay, guess we can start. Welcome uh, to my session. Today I will talk about um, continuous improvement at UNIC and I will talk about how we manage to keep and improve our ability to innovate. Um, you might wonder why you see two names up there but only one person in front. Uh, you can relax, your eyes are perfectly fine. Unfortunately, my co-speaker, Roy, he's not that fine. <laughs> he's more looking like that at the moment. So um, I will be the one uh, giving the speech, and um, I hope I can answer all of your questions. So um, quickly about me. Uh, my name is Laura Fellbecker. I'm working at UNIQ for four years. Um, I'm a senior project manager and the team leader of the Drupal team as well as uh, Type 3 and project managers. Um, as you might hear, I'm German, I'm married, and uh, if I don't work, I like to go, go running. Um, as it's already Wednesday afternoon, and you might all be a little bit like tired and exhausted, uh, we brought you a little chocolate so you can re-energize and have a lot of strength for, for our speech, so I will give you quickly the chocolate and you can pass it around. So um, I would like to start to give you a short introduction of UNIQ because UNIQ is the company we are talking about uh, today. Uh, UNIQ was founded in uh, 1996 in Switzerland <laughs> as a spin-off of the University of Bern um, by four students. Two of these students are still uh, working at UNIQ. They are, of course, not no students anymore, but uh, the one is our CEO and the other one is uh, working for business development. Uh, we are, like, you could call us a one-stop shop. We do everything from consulting, crea uh, creation, development, and operations. And we strive to ensure our customers' online success in digital marketing and digital commerce. Last year, so 2014, we had sales of around 40 million. And our 280 employees are uh, situated in five offices, two in, in Switzerland, in Bern and in Zurich, uh, two in Germany, Karlsruhe and Munich, and one in, in Austria and Vienna. And a couple of years ago, we also started to set up a development center in Wroclaw, that's in Poland. Um, our mission, Unix mission, is that uh, to increase our customer success in, in e-business. We try to do this, uh, this um, through passion for what we do, to have fun uh, uh, for our work, and uh, with our experienced and skilled employees. I don't want to scare you off with this slide, um, but I think it's important um, to understand that we are not a Drupal-only shop, um, and I think it's important to, to understand uh, and to know this, to understand how we function, how our organization is set up. So we are not only doing uh, Drupal. Besides Drupal, we offer um, our clients, for example, Adobe Experience Manager, Hybris, Sidecar, but also other open source solutions such as Magento and Typo3. Yeah. But Drupal is the most important, of course. Um, we... Um, we serve more than 200 clients. Um, here it's also important to know that we are not focused on one specific area, not on one specific industry. Uh, we serve clients, um, for example, in the manuf manufacturing business, for example, Mammut, uh, traders like Hornbach, service providers like uh, Zurich Insurance or Credit Suisse, um, consumer brands like Coca-Cola or PKZ, and public enterprises, for example, the Swiss Post. 
Um, but of course, we also conducted numerous um, exciting projects with Drupal, as for example, um, Zurich Insurance, where we um, won a lot of prizes last, uh, this year. And for example, Schweizer Illustrator, which is a, a magazine in Switzerland. And if I'm correct, it's still the, the biggest Drupal site in Switzerland. So talking about Drupal at Unique, as I said before, we are not a Drupal-only shop, so also our Drupal team looks a little bit different as it might look in, in your companies or in other companies. Um, our team members not necessarily have uh, framework-specific know-how, but they rather have in-depth know-how in their specific discipline. For example, we have de designers, UX experts, front-end developers, project managers that work with uh, different CMS, not only Drupal. But of course, we also have um, Drupal-specific uh, experts that do nothing else, and um, some of them are even here today in this room and also at Drupal.com. Um, as we're talking today about continuous improvement and innovation, it's important to, to know and to understand our culture because I'm sure that um, our culture is very important and it, it triggers the way we do um, innovation and the, the way we do continuous improvement. Um, our core values, um, you can see them here in the, in the green rectangle. It's um, being competent. So um, this means that we are working with the leading technologies that we are passionate, we love what we do, we have fun in what we do. We, we try to be personal, so we, are, we take responsibility, we appreciate every employee in our company. We, we are reliable, we keep our promise, or at least we try to keep our promises. We are quality driven and efficient, meaning to um, use the time responsibly that we have. So I showed you a little bit how our organization is maybe different to your organizations um, and that, that our mission and our uh, culture, our key values are, are like the basis for everything we do, that it's very important for us to remember them and to, to work with them in mind. Um, but I, we were thinking, is this really enough to be successful and to, to have fun in what we do and improve um, the way we do continuous improvement or, or innovation, and for sure it's not. So at Unique, uh, we, we introduce different measures on a company-wide basis for all our 280 people. For example, we introduced the total quality management. It's operational since 2008, and um, it's something um, where all our processes for all our businesses are, um, are shown so that, that people um, may look them up if, if they are not too sure what to do. Um, then we know coup messages, quality messages. These are meant to encourage our employees to suggest improvement ideas. This could be something from requesting that we have automatic out-of-office messages until, like, the need for larger screens instead of two small screens, uh, whatever you can think of. And these quality messages um, may be opened by everyone in the company. They are put in our JIRA so you can see them, you can follow them if you want to, to know what's the process, so it's very open for everyone. We also know community of practices or like PHP user groups, uh, NoHo sessions because uh, we, are, we are sure that we can benefit a lot from the experiences of our peers. So if we can talk to them, um, then we can learn a lot. And last but, lo but not least, we know universities, and universities are, are trainings, are refresher sessions, training days, um, where the, the people in our company um, learn our processes. If you're new to the company, then you can, can learn it, but also if you're a member for years, maybe you need to refresh a little bit. So I guess this is, this is already a lot, what we, what we have here, but, um, and it, it helps us, like triggering, triggering innovation, it helps us 
uh, working on continuous improvement. And I'm sure it's, it's a huge advantage of a company, uh, of working for a company like Unique to have this, like, because it, it gives you a certain stability. Um, it helps you focusing on, on these topics. But I guess it's, it's still not enough to really be innovative or have time to, to focus on this. And we were with, uh, thinking about, okay, what, what can we do? Where are we coming from? So we, we do Drupal since 2007, roughly. Since then, of course, our projects, uh, project increased in size and in importance. The expect expectations increased as well. Not only the expectations of our clients, but also of the team, of course, to have higher standards. Um, um, also, we, we needed to or try to like adapt the, the Drupal processes to our unique way. As I said, we are not a Drupal-only shop, so we, we have experts in uh, all the different areas, and somehow we need to, to fit the processes here. Of course, working with processes may be sometimes killing innovations. We had problems with that. And we had, of, of course, our employees have, have numerous ideas and tasks that they were working on to, to improve things, but we had no chance to really trace them. So one day, uh, we were thinking of, of one important and, and very influential man. And we said we want to want to change uh, uh, change something. So um, we said, okay, we have a dream too. Please don't get me wrong. We don't want to be compared or think that we are um, comparable to what this man, man uh, said or, or done uh, or did. Of course not. Um, but still, in 2014, we, we formulated our dream. And. This is our dream, that innovation and financial success are not mutually exclusive, that a large, large portion of the available working time can be invested in innovation if everyone does their part in fulfilling the business unit goals. So that was our dream in 2014. Okay, very easy. So if we are su successful, we can spend time on innovation. Not that easy, I guess. Does anyone know this situation? Okay, you're nodding. <laughs> um, I'm sure a lot of people know that. Um, we, we knew it, of course, as well. Still, we know it. Um, we are like working in the project business. Um, we have tight schedules. We have customers who, who want more and more and more. And we are very, very busy in, in working on that. And um, sometimes you just forget that you might just change a little bit and uh, you're more efficient and you can do your job better. So we ask ourselves how we might be able to manage that, how we might be able to, to change from this like square wheel to a round wheel, and how are we able to find the time to, to realize that we, can, or that we need to change something. So in, in 2014, we talked about that, and then we decided, okay, now we definitely need to change something. So we, we initiated OMEA Labs. OMEA is only the name of our business unit, uh, like our department. You can forget the name. It stands for Online Marketing, Engineering, and Analytics. And um, we started with OMEA Labs at the beginning of 2015 with a pilot, so beginning of this year. So the goal of OMEA Labs, or the goal of Labs, is to give every member of the team the possibility to spend a large percentage of the working time on innovation. So or on topics the team would like to uh, invest time in, uh, on topics the team thinks that, that are really important for the team or for the business unit or for the person itself. And we, we set up a like, certificate um, and asked the, the team members, okay, if you're really, if you're committed to do that, if you want to, to join us doing that, then please sign the form. And it was very quickly that everyone signed the form and they, they told us, okay, we really like the idea, we are committed, we want to do that. 
Um, so we said, okay, we will we'll start that. And maybe it's important to know that our department, like Omer, is the only one at UNIC yet um, who's doing that. So we were the only one starting with this project. Um, what's also important are like the, the basics of the Omer Labs model. First of all, um, Labs is an investment. So we invest uh, money for that. We don't charge anything to our customers. Um, it's all our, like, the, the money we earned that we want to invest in there. And of course, to be able to invest, invest money, uh, we need to earn it first. So it's very important for the labs model to, to work that we uh, reach our business goals. And uh, of course, we, we did a little research on like how other companies, Apple, Google, who are very in innovative, do that. And we found out that even, even Google is like using something that's called the 70-20-10 model. And they believe that if they put like 20, 70% uh, of their energy in dedicated core business, 20% of their energy in uh, businesses that are related to their core business, and 10% in like crazy thinking or unrelated core business, that they can um, make a step further, that they can um, encourage the people to work on innovation. So we said, okay, if, if Google does it this way, then can't be wrong. So we said, okay, we concentrate on our business goals. If we can reach them, then there should be time for, for labs. Of course, we had a look at their existing meetings, the existing channels that we had, and asked our, ourselves, do we really need them, or maybe could we cancel them to have more time for innovation? Of course, like there are some rules and regulations at Unique that still need to be met, like if you want to go on vacation, you need to ask for that and stuff like that. And of course, if we um, have blocker tickets with our clients and projects, then the team needs to, to work on them because if there's a blocker for the customer, of course, we don't want to have the customer wait. Um, the specific setup of the, of the labs model is that we said, okay, we have 20 mandates per person per year that are available for innovation. And we split these 20 days up into three parts. Um, so the first part is like one fixed day per month, per person. And we decided to have, uh, have it every third Wednesday in the month. And this day is really, it's, it's fixed in the, in the resource planning. It's blocked in the calendars. So that's very clear, okay, this is the day where we're working on innovation, on continuous improvement, on, on things that are interesting for us, but not on, on customer projects. And during these days, we set up these, these yellow signs. Maybe you know them from the airport or something. It's like a warning sign for everyone else in the company, and they know if they see it, okay, today is a lapse day, I better come back tomorrow, because today no one will talk to me. They are all concentrated on their innovation topics, on their, on their non-client-related projects. In addition to this one lapse day, we um, have a half day per month, so four hours per month per person, which is also fixed in their resource planning so that they really have the time. They only need to pick like a day or half a day when, when to do it. And in addition to that, we have two so-called joker days uh, per year, and these may be used for, for conventions, for special trainings. This is very flexible. The, the employees can, can choose it themselves. And um, for, the, for the labs model, we also created then a project overview sheet where everyone um, can enter his or her ideas, um, describe them, maybe give references or a JARA ticket. And then we set up like a, a four-phase um, plan uh, for, for the ideas. So in the first plan, it's really about creative thinking, about brainstorming, no sanity checks, it's really like crazy thinking if you want to say it, want to name it like that. Um, you could ask uh, yourself questions like, could we try this or that? Did you ever think about something so that really the ideas can pop up? In the second phase, um, the, the employees are a little bit more analytical, that they 
challenged the ideas, maybe they um, asked detailed questions, they discovered with their peers, is it really a good idea or did I forget something? And the, the third phase is like decision thinking or just doing it, implementing whatever the idea is. Um, maybe if you if you are not sure about something, you can always discuss it with your with your boss, with your team leader, with our business unit leader. Or if it if it's a huge idea, or maybe the evaluation of a new tool that could be used, um, then you can discuss with our business unit lead. That's Roy, who should be here too. Um, if you want to create a, a business case um, to work to to work even more on that. Of course, it's also sometimes the case that we put an idea on hold. We say, okay, maybe the idea is good, but at the moment it's just not the time. Then we mark it like that and maybe we can pick it up later. Of course, it's also important for, for Omer Labs that we not only concentrate on innovation and continuous improvement during these days, but try to like, um, introduce it in our, in our daily lives and in the, in the daily work. And then we, that we talk about it, that we spread the work, word. Uh, we have like in, uh, unique internal social media channels like Yammer, or we have a company blog that we talk about it there. Um, I guess it's, it's important to say that the, the majority of the initiatives that are handled with Omea Labs are really independently um, done by the team. So only the big projects are discussed with their team leader or the, the project, uh, the business unit lead, the majority is, is done by them. On this slide, I show you like a screenshot of our project overview that you believe me that we're really doing stuff and that there is a list. Of course, it's only a very short part of the list, but I wanted to show you this, that you believe me what I'm, what I'm telling you. So how does the, the Drupal team, my team, work with Omaya Labs? They use, at the moment, they use labs to, to solve project challenges and difficulties they are facing, to improve project work uh, with results uh, they get from the labs, sometimes uh, to deal with topics that are evolving from new company standards. Um, one example at the moment is, for example, Team City and maybe to, to delve into topics that were discussed during Drupal meetups, or I'm pretty sure after this DrupalCon there, the list will increase uh, tremendously uh, with topics that they would like to, to delve into. And um, here's a list of some, some examples that I dealt with um, up till now, since the beginning of the year. Uh, one is that I, for example, introduced BHAT testing to write um, readable test stories. Um, they learn to, yeah, to get better in writing these tests. They introduced PhantomJS uh, to um, automate the front-end testing. Um, they evaluated contributed models uh, uh, such as the penalizer. Um, they introduced new vagrant boxes, for example, um, that are closer to our hosting environment or internal IT. They evaluated and introduced Blackfire um, to, de to detect performance difficulties and um, learned how to, to use Puppet and write um, own manifest with that. And the most recent um, thing that they did, I guess it, it was finalized last week, if I'm not wrong, is the development of an automatic update bot for our customer projects. They call it the Drupal update bot, the DUP. And I will go into a little bit more detail about this. Um, using or having this uh, Drupal update bot, um, which is based on Symfony 2, um, it creates a, a Jira ticket. You see an example up here with all the required information with the security updates that, that, are, um, that are present. Um, it pushes the update to a feature branch, and um, this is done very quickly, mostly overnight. And it's very precise, so we can uh, minimize the, the problems or the bugs that might arise uh, from, an, from an update. And having an increasing number of clients and also websites um, that we support, it's, it's getting more and more important to really react uh, fast and, uh, to, to these uh, security updates. 
So this was a, a very big business value, so to say, for us to have this. Of course, there are other things that they are working on. This is just, just a short list of the things. Um, for example, they, they are evaluating Kraftwagen at the moment. They work on introducing a new build process with Team City, as I said before. Of course, they are also looking into Drupal 8 and Symphony 2. And um, like in the, in the planning phase on what they want to, to have a look at is also um, the introduction of Sonar Cube. Um, then platform performance monitoring, this is something, for example, that is on hold at the moment. And um, log file analysis with Blank. Uh, when we did the, uh, or when we did like the rehearsal session of this session during a Drupal meetup, we were asked how we measure if Labs is successful, if Formia Labs is successful. And to be honest, up till now, we don't really measure it, so we, we are not checking numbers, we don't do like controlling and putting a price tag on every lapse day, because of course it's important that we reach our business goals, as I said before, otherwise we couldn't finance it, but we see lapse mainly as an investment. It's an investment in getting better, um, but it's also an investment in, in having satisfied employees. So if we like reach our business goals and, and pay or sell what we need to, to sell, and then have our, have our satisfied customers, then we are sure that we, we are successful with labs. And I would say it's currently the case, so we don't need to measure anymore. Um, but of course, it wasn't um, all easy from the beginning. As you can imagine, the, the first Omea Labs day was, was quite chaotic. Everyone was standing there, not really knowing what to do, what, what to do with the, like the freedom, the new freedom, and the, the time, not being um, asked to work on a, on a pro client project, but really do whatever you want to do, come up with new ideas, do brainstorming. But we, are, we have no September, so we had a, a couple of Omea Labs, so it's, it's getting better, the, the people are getting more structured. They um, Usually they, they meet before the lab's day and, and decide and plan and prioritize what they want to work on. Um, they, they got used to ignore the clients and the project managers. Ignoring is, an, is a hard word, but I'm sure you know what I mean. And we also learned that if we talk with our customers about what we are doing about the labs and explain them what we are doing there, most of our customers really, they understand what we are doing, they accept what we are doing, and they even believe that they will profit from it in the future. So that's really good. Of course, there are still so, uh, project planning difficulties that we need to, to solve. Sometimes there is a client who needs a, a rollout that day, so we need to discuss with them, okay, does it really need to be that day? Can we postpone it? But we can we, we solve these problems. Um, of course, it, it needs to be coordinated if the team needs, um, for example, other resources from other teams. Um, for example, from our internal IT, it was important for their setup of the vagrant boxes, for example. And to, to remind the team to document and to track, track what they are doing. So as we have the, the labs day only once a month and they can choose the other time um, freely, it's important for them to know, okay, what, what did I do last time? Where do I want to continue? And of course, give updates and talk about it, that the rest of the company sees what we are doing. Um, in the best case, they're impressed and want to do the same, but it's very important to talk about it. Let me check if I forgot something. So, why is it cool? Why do we really like Omea Labs and, and are convinced that it's the right thing to do? I think the first thing is that we somehow see it as a bridge between the dy dynamic open source world, like the, the Drupal world, and our more process-driven world. It's also it's very nice for the team because they have their, the time uh, to focus together on a topic, on a task that is not client-related. Um, and work together. And 
I'm sure I'm, I'm allowed to say that, that almost every developer uh, likes to, to um, deal with technolo uh, technological advancements. They have fun doing that. And as I said, we are convinced that we are getting better each day we, we do the labs. And, and at the end of the day, it's really cool to be um, part of a winning team. So we're really convinced this is cool. And um, maybe to, to let you know, we had, our, as I said, we, we started in the beginning of the year with the labs as a pilot. Um, some weeks ago, two weeks ago, we did our business planning for 2016. And uh, we decided that we will uh, continue with Omea Labs. Uh, we might change it a little bit um, to, to be more flexible and to give those employees in the team that are really committed and want to spend more time um, the, the opportunity to do that so we can, um, we can give the, the time more freely. So we will continue next year with a little bit different setting, but we're sure that it's, it's good for us. So now is the time that I would like to know from you um, how you are spending uh, your time on innovation. Do you have any tips how you are doing it? And how, how you manage to, to make the time available if you also sometimes are like sitting on the square bike and, and need the, the round wheel? And if you have any other formats for, for innovations that help you do that. Any, any inputs from, from your side? Yeah, I think there's a microphone on, on the side because it's all recorded. Hey, all right. So um, we're not exactly doing it just yet, um, but we are discussing it. We're a slightly bigger company, so not so focus only, actually we go a bit beyond. I, I'm not sure if the microphone's re really working. If you want, you can also come. Closer? Come to me, <laughs> sorry. Hi there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, much louder. So um, we've been discussing this, and actually it's interesting to see a model in which you manage to get it work um, on that distribution of days that you mm -hmm. mentioned, because you mentioned like a fixed day yeah. per month, mm -hmm. and then half a day free of use within a month, plus two that you could use conference and mm -hmm. stuff. Um, we tried that before. Mm -hmm. Well, not that exactly, but we like we worked Scrum, and we were like, all right, second Friday, um, mm -hmm of which Scrum, like the afternoon will be free yeah. for you to spend it. Um, what we saw with that pattern is that people tend to just use them on that fixing or all this blocker appear because mm -hmm. there was always last minute things. Yeah. Um, so we were about to pilot something that we wanted to call the hack weeks, mm -hmm. um, which was basically just concentrate that time yeah. um, together in a shorter space of mm -hmm. time where we were sure not to be doing anything related to yeah. like all releases out of the door so mm -hmm. no blockers could actually mm -hmm. come because everything was safely yeah. in production and no new development starting mm -hmm. for like, like those five days. And we actually um, were thinking around, because we have several teams with different dependencies, we were even thinking having cross hack weeks. So actually yeah. people getting onto mm -hmm. outside teams to, to get that. So mm -hmm. we're actually about to start piloting that like within okay. the next months yeah. or so. Um, what I definitely think that is useful for is things like what you mentioned before. So basically to get the teams to make that extra effort to go into new technologies that they're not yet comfortable with. So mm -hmm. things like jumping into B hat. We're now having days focusing on continuous delivery, for example. So we're not using it yet. yet. Yeah. And when you go to the developers, the, fact, the first reaction always is, oh, that's going to require a lot of time. It's too difficult. doesn't work for mm -hmm. us, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so you really need to allow your teams to get that extra yeah. time to actually sit down and reflect on mm -hmm. what they need to change to yeah. go to those places. Because otherwise, they just go, oh, not, not for me, not for this project. Mm -hmm. We're too busy, et cetera. Yeah. So that's kind of the experience. Interesting. Well, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Do you maybe have, have questions to me on like, do you have questions to me like how we are doing it, specifics that you didn't maybe understand or that you would like to have more details?
Yes, please. Yes, I will repeat it. So uh, let's assume that we have a framework development team mm -hmm. uh, with, with five, ten different developers, and we find this kind of uh, idea or business case that, that they would be good to learn the app mm -hmm. or, or similar new technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the question was that um, if you have a, a large development team of like 10, 20 people, um, that it's, uh, if it's difficult or that it's difficult to um, have them learn something on, on one day, like something difficult, and uh, motivate them to do that during that day. Is that correct? Doing it in parallel, all together at the same day. Um, the department we are uh, using Omea Labs, uh, with, uh, we have 24, 25 people. But I think it was never the case that all of them did the same thing at the, at the same day. It was more that maybe they grouped into pairs of, I would say, maximum of five. And they were discussing things and working on things. And um, for example, with, with the bee hat, they were working on that. And then um, after they've been at, at the point that they had the feeling, OK, we understand it now, that they tr kind of like gave training to the other ones. So I think we never had it that really all the 20 people were working on the same thing at the same day. because. One reason is also that the people can decide by themselves what they are doing. It's not me telling them, okay, today you're working on this and this and this. It's really them to decide what are they working on. And the chance is that all the 20 people decide at the same day that they want to get better in the same thing is quite low. So yeah, I guess if you really want that, that all of them are working at, this, at the same thing, maybe it's a completely different model. You, you set up a, a training day for that better, maybe. More questions? OK. Then thank you. Um, I'm available afterwards a little bit. Um, if you're interested in working for us, then please apply. And um, here also our contact details if you want to uh, get in contact afterwards. Roy wasn't here today, but of course he knows everything about, about Omea Labs as well. So you can, of course, contact the two of us. And thank you for your interest, and have a nice day. Bye.